Welcome to Maximo Joe's Cafe. Brought to you by Bonetti. This week in the cafe, we're going to have a good time. Welcome to this episode of Maximo Joe's Cafe. Well, this is the third installment. I've uh, they've given me better lighting. Hopefully, you can see me better. So this week in the cafe, we're going to be talking about workflow best practices, and then we're going to go through Maximo's workflow applications. T talk about them a little bit, and there's also going to be a link to a detailed workflow introduction on YouTube that I have. So when we're talking about best business practices with workflow, it's my opinion that workflow is probably the most powerful application in Maximo to help control and maintain your business processes. You can use workflow on any application or any record in Maximo. Everything from onboarding new employees to tracking a service request or work orders. One of the best business practices for workflow is you design your workflow to meet your business needs not the other way around I've seen a lot of people that say well this is what workflow does and then they change their practices to try to make workflow work the application is robust enough to be able to match your best business practices when we're talking workflow if you have a process that 90 percent of the time or more works exactly the same way then that's an ideal situation for workflow so that's something to consider okay workflow application allows you to process records in part based on your best business practices you basically have to map out your process and then you take and look and see how you're going to do that with workflow when designing a workflow one of the hardest hurdles to get over is the what ifs because there's going to be a lot of pushback from everyone to say if workflow is going to work this way what if this happens what if that happens so while you're designing your workflow you want to aim for 90 percent now you must plan for the what ifs you must build into your workflows ways of handling the what ifs so if a record gets stuck in workflow because uh, it falls outside of that 90%, something's unique about it. You need a way to pull it out of workflow and deal with it manually. There's many steps to creating a workflow. Okay, the workflow process includes the following phases. Designing the workflow process, creating the actual workflow, validations, testing, activating it. Uh, one of the most critical and time-consuming parts of designing the process I cannot overemphasize enough. Okay, remember that workflows should be designed to support the way you do business, not the other way around. Okay, part of the designing process. The first step is to map out your current processes in detail. Okay, this involves interviewing the individuals that use the current process okay so you take that purchase order from the start through the process to where it gets approved and you look at each step along the way and map that out okay you can also look at documents like standard operating procedures that are used regulations that must be um, considered during the process the next step once you've mapped out everything as is then you look for improvements to the process. Basically, the goal is to save time and save money. So if it normally takes you three days to process a PO because it's bouncing around from this person to that person, there may be a way to look at your processes and deal with that PO in less than an hour. So what you want to do is map out any proposed changes to your process. And at this time, you want to take and try to capture all the major what ifs. And that comes from your interview. And it's the interviewer that, that drives this because they've got to push it from an angle of what do you normally do? And then what could break that process? Tell me a situation where you do not use this process and capture those. Okay, once you've got all of that documented, now you want to start creating your workflow process. This can include many revisions as you move forward. 
you want to take and make sure you document all your development details. So if you have a process that requires a certain function to happen, then you're going to say, okay, this is how we're going to take care of that in the workflow process. This is where you do your gap analysis to ensure that the process can be handled through the workflow and how you're going to rectify anything that comes up. Once all of that is documented and agreed upon that this is what you want to do, then you start the actual building the workflow in, in a development system. And the biggest best practice when it comes to workflow is test, test, test. Okay, I cannot emphasize this enough. And you don't want to just test it from a designer's point of view. You want to get a UAT, user acceptance testing, get those people that are involved in the process to use your workflow. Make sure you have any unknowns discovered during the testing and that way you can improve that process prior to moving it to official testing and deployment into your system. Let's talk about the workflow applications in Maximo. What is workflow in Maximo and how do we use it? Basically, the workflow application is you use workflow to plan, design, and build, test, implement, and manage workflow processes. Okay, that's your workflow designer. Workflow provides a means of electronically reproducing your business processes so they can be applied to records in Maximo. With workflow, you can manage the movement of the records through your processes from start to finish. You can instruct individuals to act on specific records, specify delegates if they are not available, ensure that individuals act in a timely manner by sending out notifications and after a certain time frame, uh, notifications go to their supervisors. So the supervisor can say, oh, Johnny's out today, so let's go ahead and move this forward. You can also take and ensure that an audit trail exists for each record and process. There are a number of industries that are regulated externally, which require these audit trails on their records and decisions made, any changes like pharmaceuticals, medical devices, nuclear power plants. Those are normally external requirements through government agencies. A workflow is an integrated part of the software. The workflow process and their supporting records are at the system level. In a multiple site implementation, workflow processes can be used for all organizations and sites. You can design processes and sub-processes that are specific to your organization or specific to a site by using logical branching. You can create a workflow process for any business object because all applications are associated with product business objects and can run a customer Java class. You can build workflow processes for any application, including cloned and custom applications. Workflow handles assignments in a flexible manner. You can specify the assignee relationships. You can assign them to a specific person, but I recommend signing it to a role and then add those roles to a person group and as people move in and out of your business, all you have to do is change who is in that person group for that site or organization to receive those notifications. You can also take and set up email in a workflow inbox, uh, eliminating the need for users to search for their assignments. They get an email notification that says this record requires your attention click on the link and go directly into Maximo, sign in and you're at that record. Workers or administrators can also have the ability to assign workflow tasks, stop a process, remove a record from uh, the control of workflow. You can specify points in the process where you want email notifications to be generated. Again, you can have delegates set up so if someone doesn't handle the record within a certain amount of time it gets uh, their delegate takes care of that or you can have it with the calendar and the person record and labor record specified delegates for workflow process so if they are if a record comes to 
me and I'm on vacation on the calendar, it automatically gets diverted to my delegate to be handled during that time. And when I get back from vacation and I'm on the, I have an active role in the calendar, then it comes back to me. Workflow can be very, very complicated or very simple. You can also take and run batch files, exe files from, uh, from a stored local server. You can basically do anything with workflow or almost anything with workflow. I would suggest that you use caution when, if you first get into workflow because um, it can get very complicated and you don't want to make it over complicated. So do a few simple workflows, see how they work. If you see an, a reason to add something, you can always move that change forward. There are a number of applications that work with Workflow. And each of these applications can directly or indirectly support its functionality, such as actions, communication templates if you want to send uh, notifications out, escalations, your inbox assignment setup is where the user logs into Maxmo and looks in their inbox to see if they have any active Workflow records to be dealt with, your people application, person groups, roles, Workflow Administrator, Workflow Designer, and your Workflow Inbox. Well, that was a brief introduction to what is Workflow. As you can see, this subject can be very large. So what I have done is I've included a link in YouTube to a detailed introduction to the Workflow Designer tool itself. So feel free to go there and uh, Enjoy that, and hopefully you can learn a lot. Now we come to the end of this episode of Maximo Joe's Cafe. I want to thank you for stopping by. Please like, comment, and visit our webpage at Benetti.com. And feel free to uh, ask any questions. If you need more uh, information in more detail about how you can use your Maximo better, please do not hesitate to contact Bonetti. Thank you very much, and have a great day.